In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the latest Figma prototyping features, which are set variable and conditions. We're going to be using a simple example with increasing and decreasing a number. So let's dive right in and find out what's possible with these new prototyping features. So here we have a frame with a number and then two buttons. As you can see, one is intended to increase the number, the other one to decrease it. We're going to be setting up using these new features an interaction where all within one single frame, we're going to be increasing and decreasing this number. There are going to be three relationships within this prototype that you can see outlined right here. So the first relationship in the middle, that's going to be a variable that will be linked to this number and will therefore any change we make to this variable is going to be updated in this text field. And then we are going to be using the set variable prototyping feature to link this button with an action to increase this variable and on the other hand on the other side this button with the action of decreasing this variable, right? We're going to have these relationships and now let's start defining them. So first of all, we're going to be starting with the middle one, the variable. We're going to have to create a variable for this, but I already created one in advance uh, that I have in the test category called number. And the value of this uh, variable is nine currently. So if you need to create a new variable, click this button and then, you know, create a number variable, right? So it's a number variable with the value of nine. The first step is going to be selecting this text object and then going to the text section on the right side and applying a variable. I'm going to click this and then look for the test number variable, right? Here it is. I'm going to click it. And as soon as I click it, you can see that it's being updated because this relationship has just been created. And if I now go to variables and change this variable to, for example, 11, this number is going to be changed as well because it's linked, right? And you can tell that it is linked by going again to this text section. You can see that we have a variable specified right here with a broken chain link that we can icon uh, with which we can uh, detach this variable. We can basically delete this relationship. So I'm just going to remove these two because they are already finished uh, or actually just this arrow. So that's done. Then we're going to be setting variables. The plus icon is going to be increasing this variable by one. So let me go to prototype and add an interaction. And this interaction is going to be on click, right? Because it's going to be a normal button. And now we need to specify the action. The action is going to be set variable, right? So we can see that we have set variable and conditional these two new features from Figma. These are the newly launched prototyping features. So when I now click on set variable, I'm going to be prompted to select which variable we want to affect. And we want to affect the variable that's connected to this number, to this text object. And that's going to be test number, right? 11. So we are going to be changing the test number variable to itself plus one, which means that we're going to be increasing it by one, right? So let me start writing down number. We are setting the variable to the same variable plus, you can type a plus or, or click on the action that, as you have just seen, plus one, enter. Right? So we are going to be setting the variable test number one to itself plus one. Uh, the names are different, but it's the same variable, right? I'm not sure why that's the case, but it simply is. So that is now finished and we need to specify the second button, right? So we're going to do exactly the same thing, however, in the opposite direction. So instead of plus, we're going to have a minus. I'm going to select this, add an interaction, on click, set variable, and then test number two test number plus one enter actually made a mistake that's going to be minus one a okay? minus one so we're going to be setting a variable to itself minus one as opposed to this button where we are setting this to itself plus one so these relationships should now be defined. Let's go to the prototype and see uh, what we have. I'm gonna have to reset the prototype. And if I click the button on the right, I'm gonna be increasing this number. And then when I'm gonna click the one on the left, I'm gonna be decreasing this number. Okay, so that's great. That's how you use the set variable prototyping feature. But what about conditions? 
right? We also get this conditional function. How can we make this work? For those of you who are familiar with coding, you know what uh, an if else condition is. This follows a similar logic. It is totally understandable for those of you who are not experienced uh, with coding as well. So don't worry, but we're gonna have to think about some kind of a condition uh, that will be applied when, uh, when working with this. So I have one in mind, which could be that let's create a condition where if this number, if the variable is bigger than 10 and you keep increasing the number, you're gonna be starting to increase it in increments of two instead of one. Okay, so let's define that. When I select this on click interaction, you can see that we have this set variable. I'm gonna collapse this one and then I'm gonna add a conditional, okay, a conditional that is gonna verify if a certain condition is uh, the case and then do something based if that's true or false, okay? Here we are going to specify if something is true, then do this otherwise do this. So what do we know? We know that when uh, the variable is going to be bigger than 10 or equal to 10, we want to be increasing that to itself plus two. So let's add a nested action first that's going to be set variable. And this variable is again going to be test number two, test number plus two, right? enter. So if something is the case, set the variable to itself plus two. And this condition has to of course be, so here we ask if something is the case, if the variable is bigger than, greater than or equal to, right, let's select this one, to 10, then do this, right? So we have a condition that asks if the number is bigger or equal to, bigger than or equal to 10, then increase it by two after clicking, right? Otherwise, and now what's gonna happen otherwise? We know that we already defined this interaction where we increase it by one, right? We set the variable to itself plus one. So let me just collapse this and then click and drag this into the else section, right? So there are two things that can happen. We can have the variable bigger than 10, in which case we wanna be increasing it by two and then if it's smaller than 10, we wanna be increasing it just by one after clicking on this button, right? So all of this, this whole condition is tied to the click interaction on this button. So let's close this and go to prototype, reset the prototype and decrease it to, let's say two, right? And now let me keep increasing. As you can see, I'm adding one each time I click this button. But when I get to 10 and I click again, I'm gonna be increasing this to 12. 12, 14, 16, and so on. So that is because we have set up this condition. We could do the same with this button. We could copy this entire interaction, right? So let me just select this. Let me just select this interactions, copy that, and then Command C and then Command V, paste that here. So I'm gonna remove the original interaction command V, and now we have the conditional here as well. But this time, we don't wanna be increasing this number because this is a minus button. So let me just change the plus to a minus like this. And then this one here as well, so this one here as well, we should be decreasing the number by two if it's bigger than 10, right? So let me go to prototype. As you can see, if I click the minus, I'm going to be I'm going to be subtracting in increments of 2 until I get to 10 where I will start to or under 10 where I'm going to start to subtract in increments of 1 again right so this is a very simple example on how you can utilize the conditional function and set variable function in figma to create very flexible prototypes so this used to be quite complicated if if we wanted to set something like this up but uh, these new features simplify things a lot so i think that's great there's a lot of things to explore so i encourage you to just open figma and try and play around with this stuff to discover things that maybe nobody has yet discovered. So keep on trying.
keep on experimenting with these new features. The only disadvantages, of course, is that it's paid, right? So these are paid features. You cannot access the conditional and set variable, I think, and also uh, variable modes in the free version. So that's the only disadvantage, but that's just something we're gonna have to deal with. So I hope you learned something new. I hope this feature now makes sense. Leave a like if you found this video useful and I will see you in the next one.